Hello everyone, I'm Jason Tang. I started to learn harmonica when I was 9, and the reason was something you wouldn't expect. You know in a typical Chinese or Asian family, we value thrift or say uh, we never waste. So it happens in a Saturday morning when my mom just wake me up and says, Hey boy, I think you should go and join the primary school harmonica club. Because you know, at home we got an unused harmonica for a very long time. I think we, we better don't waste it. <clears throat> so I was like, Mom, I don't want. I don't want to learn anything. Then here comes the most typical reply by the Chinese parent. They say, <clears throat> if you don't learn harmonica, you don't get to play video games anymore. Well, you we can't argue with that. You know, video games is the most important thing in childhood. So yeah, that's it. That's the reason I pick up the harmonica as the instrument and eventually become part of my career in the future. So after all, it's not a totally bad idea if, if you got forced to learn something, right? <laughs> and as soon as I enter primary school harmonica club, um, the things doesn't go as smooth because it was not my original idea, okay? So um, when it's class time, um, time to practice, I will go out, hang out with friends, I will go and play ping pong basketball, um, I do whatever things, go to canteen, uh, I start playing harmonica. So not surprisingly, I got the worst playing uh, in, in the class and I fail almost every exam. You know, they, they have some kind of like a routine weekly basis, so it goes practice, 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 exam, and then again practice, 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 exam. So for me, the, the syllabus and the whole class is such dull, boring, and I don't like it at all. Um, until when I enter secondary school, I met my coach, I met a bunch of friends who are really passionate with learning harmonica and the things start to change. Well, the first thing I like is uh, we get to choose whatever songs that we like to practice and also we get to dictate our own practice schedule, um, especially when it comes to performance and also competitions because you, you need to self-initiate yourself to achieve uh, whatever goals that you set for yourself. And another thing is, uh, we, we got a lot of performing opportunities at school, such as school celebrities, commercial events, get invited, and sometimes concerts, that we organize concerts. And even the largest catalyst for my harmonica career is the uh, International Harmonica Festivals, which are held, I think, almost annually. So we get to go to countries like Japan, South Korea, China, um, Singapore, and we get to compete with the other harmonica performers and yeah, harmonica players from other countries and make friends with them. So it's such an invaluable time frame for me in the secondary schools because my harmonica skills got polished, the music sense is there. And also the most important thing is I pick up a lot of core values such as learn to be disciplined, to be independent, um, to be perseverance and also teamwork. And also, the most important thing is um, I get to know a lot of friends, which till now, my secondary school teammates and friends are still my best friend. And that's why I bring in the system from the Harmony Club in secondary school into my current university, University of Kabang Sam, Malaysia. And I founded um, the Harmony Club named KTSN Harmony Club. KTSN is the college name. Um, so when I started, I'm the only one and also I'm the chairman, I'm the member, I'm the secretary, uh, etc. And I started to go for showcase because um, I want to know at least what is harmonica and also do some persuade of my friends. And eventually um, six members joined. They're all my batch friends coming from different course. Um, so four of them are totally new to music. Two of them uh, have some experience in playing orchestra. So. Um, the main idea of coming out with this harmonica club um, is actually I saw a lot of my friends, um, especially in secondary schools, they, they actually want to learn an instrument, but um, maybe due to financial restrictions they can't afford, or maybe academic burden, they are, they are going for SEM, um, so they can't join. They, they have this kind of regret uh, for their musical dream, so, so I, I want to try to create a platform for them to fill it. And also, the, each of the members will pay 10 ringgit for class, uh, which was equivalent to 2 USD, which, yeah, I think is affordable. <laughs> and then, um, the, the harmonica club was quite um, quiet until we made our first appearance 
in uh, our performance in KTS and Got Talent. Let me show you a video clip. It was definitely a big hit, you know, um, see the audience screaming and fascinated by our performance and particularly they are amazed by how well we can, uh, the members can adopt to these instruments in just this short amount of time. And by the next year, around 20 members joined us and it's kind of like triple fold the members, the numbers of members. And on that year, I decided to come up with something worthwhile and out of the box. I decided to come up with a public harmonica concert with 500 sittings. And yes, just with the 20 freshly joined members. And after that, there was months of um, meetings, preparation, practice as I um, was the chairman, the coordinator and also the coach was super busy. Okay. And the interesting thing uh, that I want to come up with is a mini harmonica concert, uh, sorry, mini harmonica orchestra, which is literally an orchestra just consists of um, harmonica. And here's a video clip on how are we practicing that. Besides to promote this new emerging instrument, uh, we embrace ourselves and go to the local FM, which is IFM, to air this concert out. And guess what? Uh, after that, a, a company bought a pile of tickets to all the staffs, and it really gives us a huge lift in our ticket sales. Another notable effort is we come up with a harmonica showcase right in the middle of our college. Um, it was Quite a fun process, you know. We go and rent um, the audio system. We set up a platform. We come up with the lighting, and we give up flyers to all the residents in the college, and they just kind of join in, and it's kind of like a busking event. And we take turns to come up to the stage and perform different types of songs with using different types of harmonica. So for me, uh, regardless how well the ticket sales on that day, I think the most important thing is. Um, we enjoy a lot during the process and I think for everyone, especially in universities, to, to really uh, come up with a project, to run a project, what matters most is the process. And unfortunately, um, the, just right before, two weeks before the, the concert starts, um, COVID strikes and everything just blew up. Um, we have to refund the tickets, we have to refund the hall, the audio systems and all the pamphlets, flyers, boom just dissolve in acid. <laughs> That's a, a metaphor. Um, for me, that of course, it feels depressed um, for me and my whole team. But I always tell myself there's always another chance um, after this pandemic and we will get more prepared uh, after that. So um, looking back three years from now, I never thought that uh, just a single idea of sharing how many gun knowledge would have scaffold and expand. Um, today, we actually have, have totally three universities have their own harmonica clubs, um, including University of Kemang Sam Malaysia, University of Malaya, and University of Putra Malaysia, and more than 60 students were accessible to harmonica education. And it was definitely something that I was proud of. Um, through this whole process, we I've been through ups and downs, the uncertainties of forming the clubs, um, the stress time when I'm going through the concerts, 
um, conflicts among school authorities and also the clubs and how the st- stressful situation to, to coach students and etc. a lot of them. But I always think this kind of process makes me go stronger and tougher and also more effective. Along the journey, there's critics and there's doubts. Um, one of the most common questions that I get asked is how and can you or how do you maintain good grades in studies while being so active, participate in clubs? The answer is definitely yes. I still manage to maintain the first class CGPA in my course studies. And by how, I would say the answer is always um, forming of good habits and also mental training. So try to imagine, uh, let's say Olympics athletes or marathon runner, how could they be so tough and be so persistent when they are doing that while me and you can't, we, we can't finish a 100k marathon without training because they, um, they did practice in daily basis, they go for muscle training, stamina, psychology, techniques, etc. So perseverance, disciplines, um, stress handling, time management, it builds up in a similar way. For me, it's a lifetime road. You, you just need to practice every day. And I'm not capable before I start the process, but I was trained to become capable during the process. Let's say today I need six hours in, in maintaining my class activity and I, hope I have only one hour to study before the exam. So you really gonna be effective in the one hours, no phone, you cannot look to the phones, no laptop, no other distraction, just one hour and finish that. So that's how it gets trained. One more important thing is never overthink before you start the action and don't try to be a perfectionist before you start anything. We have to know that um, the achievement is led by actions, by not just mere ideas. Okay. I especially like the book Anti-Fragile by the economist Nassim Talib and he says, I quote, the fragile wants tranquility, the anti-fragile grows from disorder and the robust doesn't care too much. I understand how people hate randomness and uncertainties because it makes us feel, it hallucinates us, it makes us feel fear, stress, but we have to know Disorder breaks the spirit, stress overwhelms us, but every time we overcame those obstacles, we go stronger and tougher. And I believe that's the meaning of learning process. So at the end, don't be afraid of challenge, and don't hold yourself too much. Take baby step every time, and you will go, you will go stronger and tougher every time we overcome it. Thank you very much.